Well, hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. So I go to Sam's Club now and then, and I looked uh, a while ago, and I saw a watch that was really interesting to me, but I didn't buy it. And uh, months later, I was in there just a few days ago, and I saw the same watch, and it was marked down 45%. And I thought, I'll bet the people who watch YouTube videos would love to know more about that watch. So here it is. Well, here it is, the ProTrek PRW2500T-7. I believe that T stands for titanium because the watch bracelet is titanium. Uh, the case itself is not titanium, and the, the watch back is not titanium. It's stainless steel. But nice, comfortable titanium bracelet there, and lots of great features on this watch. So let's just talk about all of them. First of all, from the regular timekeeping screen here, you see a lot of things all at once. Day of the week, the date with the year, local time, and this is a barometric pressure trend right there, showing me that the barometric pressure has been going up. Right there, a little indicator that, that shows you that reception of atomic time information has happened correctly, and there's the phase of the moon. So all of this available in the regular timekeeping mode. Uh, the next mode on this one, it shows you the tide. So this is going to show me uh, that the high tide is at 6 a.m. And if I want to scroll ahead here using this button on the lower right side, it can show me what the tide will be on uh, upcoming days. Or I could use this button here, the middle button on the right side, to just go ahead hour by hour to see when high and low tide are going to be for the date that I have selected. So um, there you go. Also, you got the phase of the moon up here, and we're almost at a full moon. It's showing that the since the new moon, it's 13.1 days. And again, if I scroll ahead to a future date, it's going to show me the uh, equivalent phase of the moon at, on that future date. The next mode, then, is, uh, well, a record mode. So you can record values like uh, the altitude and some other, you know, things I'll get into that in a moment, but uh, this is where you recall the figures that you have recorded. So let's move on from for now. Here's the alarm mode, and there are five alarms on here, plus the hourly signal. So if I push this button down here, I can scroll ahead and look at what the other alarms are set to. And there's the hourly signal. If I want to turn that on or off, I can tap this middle button there. And uh, when I do turn on the hourly signal, a little bell shows up there. And if I turn on one of these alarms, then that's kind of the alarm symbol right there. So that's telling you whether or not you've got any one of the alarms or the hourly chime set to go. I, I like that it shows me my local time here while I'm still in the alarm mode setting up these different alarms. Next mode is a stopwatch mode, and this actually is a 24-hour stopwatch. Uh, it will go 24 hours, and if you leave it on, it'll just reset to zero and keep on going. Or, you know, you can stop it and start it with this button down here on the lower right. This button up here on the upper right side is your split time. So, you know, you got that. Or you can stop it and reset it. And again, nice little stopwatch. Now, this is a countdown timer. And uh, this will count down anywhere from one minute up to 60 minutes. So if I hold down this adjust button there, then I can set this to some other value. Again, anywhere from 1 to 60 minutes. And when you get this going, it's going to, uh, when it gets to zero, it's going to beep for about 10 seconds. And so, you know, there you go. Pretty standard stuff as far as these, these features go. Then there's the world time mode. So you can select some other time zone. And again, there's your local time, and here's the time in that other time zone. There's UTC. If I select some other time zone, uh, this button down here on the right side is uh, moving you know, eastward on the map to select another time zone, or this one up here would be moving westward on the map to select another time zone. And if by chance the other time zone you've selected is not UTC, then you can show daylight saving time in one of these other time zones. So let's say it's London there. And if I wanted to say, well, what about when there's daylight saving time in London? Then I just hold this button down here, the adjust button. And when I hear a beep, now it's showing right there, it says DST. So that's daylight saving time in London. 
if they happen to have daylight saving time in London. This is something you adjust manually in the world time mode. But I know that this time of the year, it is not daylight saving time in London. So I'm going to hold this button down one more time to turn off daylight saving time. And just for fun, I'm going to set it back to UTC as my default world time time zone. All right, now this is radio control. You see this watch has a radio receiver built in. It can receive right there that says multiband six. It can receive atomic time information and also date information from any of six atomic time transmitters in different parts of the world. So there's one in China, there are two in Japan, also one in the United States and one in the UK and one in Germany. So those are the six transmitters for multiband six. This watch is going to attempt to receive uh, the, the atomic time information starting at midnight. Uh, and then if it's not successful after somewhere between two and 10 minutes, it's going to stop trying and it'll try again at 1 a.m. And if not successful, it'll try again at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., up to six times. But if it is successful on any of those attempts, it'll cancel the rest of them until the next night at midnight. So this is showing that it, it was successful just after midnight. Uh, that's today's date. So not bad on the radio controlled uh, atomic time reception. If I don't want to wait for it to automatically try to receive atomic time information, I can, from this screen, initialize a manual reception by simply holding down this button here on the lower right side. And now it's going to start to try to receive. Again, it takes somewhere between two and 10 minutes to fully process the information it's receiving. Right there, it's showing L1 for level one reception. This time of day being the middle of the day, uh, reception is not the best. Level one reception is not very good. Usually wanted to get up to level three reception for the best reception. So if it doesn't work, it'll just stop trying after a few minutes. As it turns out, I get pretty good reception most of the time here at my place, especially overnight. So I don't really need it to do the manual reception right now but that is available if you want to. Also, if I, I'm gonna push this button to cancel that reception right now. From this screen right here, you can also cancel the automatic time reception by simply holding down this adjust button. And now it says, you know, RC on, meaning that it will try every night to receive atomic time. If I push this button down here, I can turn that off. And that may be useful if you're living in a part of the world where you're just out of range of the uh, atomic time transmitters and you can save a little bit of battery power by not having it try to receive. But I'll leave it on because I'm in a pretty good spot where I am to receive WWVB. Now from here, if I press mode, it takes me back to my regular timekeeping home screen. Now, one thing I didn't mention so far, this watch has tough solar. That's Casio's power supply that uses a solar cell built into the face of the watch to automatically charge the power supply inside the watch. So with any luck, I could go for years and years and years and not have to worry about replacing a battery on this watch because normal exposure to everyday lighting conditions is going to be enough to keep that battery topped off. Right down there is the indication of how well that battery is charged right now, low, medium, or high. It's on high now, so uh, I expect it to stay that way as long as I leave the watch exposed to regular amounts of daylight every day. It'll go for a few months uh, in, in complete darkness and still hold the time. But um, well, you know, you don't want to do that. Wear the watch, uh, leave it out so it can get some daylight and keep that battery charged. Medium or high, uh, those, th that's good. If it gets below medium, if it gets down to low, then some of the functions are shut down to save battery power until it gets charged up to at least medium. So keep that in mind. But like I said, I've, I've had other watches that use the uh, tough solar feature and I've had really good experiences with those, again, going a long, long time without worrying about batteries. And because of multiband six, I also don't have to worry about uh, setting the time either. All I have to do is make sure I've set my time zone correctly. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Now, other modes on this watch. This watch has Casio's triple sensor. That's a barometer a thermometer and a compass. So uh, that allows you to do a lot of neat things on here. Great for the outdoors person. You want to go hiking or biking or climbing. It's a great watch to have out there for your outdoor activities 
when you can uh, monitor those conditions. The barometer is also used to calculate altitude, so it becomes a barometric altimeter built into this watch as well. And there's a lot of stuff to review as far as how to get into those features. Let's start with the compass. So if I push this button marked COMP, there's my compass. Now the compass will work better if the watch is uh, horizontal, the watch face is horizontal to the ground, which would be about like that. That's not ideal for the camera at this moment, but uh, what it's showing me here, this, this kind of overlay over the top of all the uh, LCD readouts, that right there is indicating north. So if I, if I were to orient the watch, try this again. If I orient the watch uh, where I think, you know, going from this south indicator to this north indicator that's pointing north, then I can see that the watch agrees with me. And so you've got an in indicator there pointing towards the north on the bezel and also a digital readout of the bearing being zero. I'll have to keep pushing that to get it to go back into that mode because it does time out after a little while. Now, if I were to turn it you know, like this, so that, uh, you know, north, north is this way, then it's still, again, showing that there's north and, and my bearing is about, you know, almost 90 degrees there. And if I want to, I can save that figure uh, by, pushing, by pushing a button down here. All right, so now it, it, it saved 88. So, you know, you can save that Save that for reference if you need to. I could turn it around this way and again, save a new heading by pushing that button down there. And again, because the north side of the watch was pointed somewhere else when it saved that reading, you know, that's a little reference that you can, you can have there as you're out and about. Or you also get uh, up here in this top line, you, know, you get the, uh, the letters to show you, you know, east, northeast, or, you know, northeast, or just whatever, whatever the bearing happens to be. You've got those, those abbreviations in there as well. And again, this is not working ideally because uh, I'm, I'm, I don't have it you know, properly aligned for regular use. I, I'm trying to show it to the camera. I can get out of the compass mode by pushing the mode button, or I could select another mode, like let's say the barometer mode. I push that button right there. And now it's showing me uh, barometer settings and the temperature. So right there, it's showing 84 degrees Fahrenheit as the temperature. And that's, uh, well, you should keep in mind that this watch will react to your body heat. So because I've been handling this watch a lot, it's, it's picking up some heat from my hands. So if I want a true, you know, a true reading of the temperature that's not affected by my hands, I'm going to have to take the watch off and leave it, you know, somewhere where I want to take that reading and not, not, not touch it for a while. And that will go down and show you, you know, the actual reading. But down here, this is now showing me the barometric pressure. And straight out of the box, it was not correct. So there is a way to calibrate that. Uh, you know, barometric pressure is dependent on temperatures, dependent on altitude. And I'm, I'm up around 5,000 feet right now, and I'm sure this watch was put together somewhere much closer to sea level. So what I had to do when I first got it, I, uh, I put it in the barometer mode here, and I held down this adjust button until things started flashing. First thing it would allow me to do is calibrate the thermometer. It should be accurate to within just a couple of degrees, but if I think that it's wrong, I can manually adjust that up or down, you know, as my new reference for what the correct temperature would be. And then if I push the mode button here, then it allows me to calibrate the, uh, the barometer so I can, you know, consult with a, a known accurate weather station in my area to find out what the current barometric pressure is. And that's where I can set that. And once I've set that, then a lot of the other settings will fall in line. Okay, I've push mode once again. And again, I can just toggle back between my fine tuning on the thermometer and the barometer. I push adjust so that things stop blinking. And uh, okay, now it's just back into the regular mode there. Now this little indicator that uh, kind of sits over the top of all the LCD stuff, this is supposed to show me a, a, a pressure trend. So right now the pressure has been holding steady for a little while, but if the pressure were to suddenly go up or down, then this little indicator would be like, you know, a little needle that would go and kind of show a downward trend or an upward trend in the barometric pressure. So that's available in the barometer mode. 
Now I can switch to the altimeter mode and I can just push that button right there. And uh, again, this might not be exactly right straight out of the box. I did adjust it um, earlier, so now it shows about 5,000 feet, which is where I am. But if you needed to adjust that manually just to make it uh, just to make it conform with a known altitude, then that's where you do that. I, I press and hold that. Now that is, uh, that's blinking right there and I can, you know, it, it goes in what, 20, 20 foot intervals as I fine tune that. So I can just set that to where I think it should be and then everything falls in line from there. So, you know, if you're out hiking and uh, you, you start at a spot and you know the altitude there, the elevation, you can enter that and then you can watch your progress as you're going up or down around that initial uh, reference. And another way I can track those changes is uh, when I'm just sitting here like this one right there, it says, you know, plus, plus the current uh, altitude. But what I can do is I can just press this button down here that's marked adjust. And it's going to then give me a reference of plus or minus from here. So again, as I'm starting at 5,000 feet and as I'm moving around, it's going to show me, you know, I'm going plus 20 feet or you know, down 20 feet or it's, it's going to keep tracking that. So that's kind of a nice way to track your progress while you're still seeing the, uh, the current altitude right there. And also as you're going along, maybe you want to save this reference and this time and, and know, you know, later on where you were at that time, where you were at that, uh, that location, you can press and hold this altitude button. If I press that long enough and then it said REC because it recorded that information that I can tr retrieve later uh, in the uh, recall mode. One of the modes that I access by pressing this mode button. So I'll, you know, kind of scroll through these different modes until there's the one where I recall what I just recorded a moment ago. All right. And there's a lot of ways you can uh, store and recall those. You know, it's got a, a set uh, number one and a set number two of records you've recorded. I won't get into too many details there because, uh, you know, I can just get lost in the weeds with some of this information. But if this is important to you, you know, dig into the manual and you can find out a lot about recording and tracking altitude as you're out and about. So let me just show you something about the initial setup of this watch. Let's say it's fresh out of the box. You just, you just got it. The first thing you're going to want to do is press and hold this adjust button and make sure you've set the correct home time zone. Now, in my case, it's the Denver time zone or the mountain time zone in the United States. But you can use these buttons, the lower button on the right, as if you're scrolling eastward on the map, or the upper button as though you're scrolling westward on the map to adjust your home time, uh, time zone. I'm going to leave it back on Denver. Now, if I press the mode button from here, it's going to uh, allow me to set my daylight saving time setting. So right there, it's flashing DST for daylight saving time. Right now, it's set to automatically switch to and from daylight saving time. Uh, but I can change that to where daylight saving time is always off or it's always on. Or again, I'm going to leave it on auto. I'll press the mode button again. And here I can have a 12 hour or 24 hour display uh, on all modes. I'm going to leave it on 12 hour mode for now. Um, here I can manually set the time. So seconds, hours, minutes, the year, the month, and the day of the month. Now, um, if I have it in you know, automatic reception mode for multiband six, then the next time that it's able to receive its time and date information, it's going to override my manual setting with, with whatever it receives. Or you know, if I've turned off the, uh, the reception for multiband six, then it's going to leave it on whatever I've manually set it for. But just keep, keep in mind, if you feel the need to manually set the time, it will be overwritten if multiband six is activated. Okay, next. Okay, it's asking me uh, either beep or mute. So, um, it, you know, the default would be the beep mode. So every time you push a button to change modes or uh, activating the sensors here or starting and stopping a, a stopwatch, those sorts of things, yeah, there will be a little bit of a beep. Or if I press this button, it will mute that. And so it's still going to make a sound when you get to the end of a countdown timer or when the alarm goes off or when the, uh, the little hourly chime goes off but it will mute all the other beeps when you're pressing buttons and changing modes and stuff like that. So sometimes I prefer the mute uh, active there just so I can be a little bit more discreet as I'm pushing buttons and playing with my watch. 
or I can leave it in beep mode and have beeps all over the place whenever I push buttons. Okay, this is uh, LT3. That means that when the backlight comes on, it'll stay on for three seconds, or this way it stays on for one and a half seconds. You have that option. Now, normally you'd wanna keep it uh, short because you'd be worried about draining the battery too much, but since this is a, a tough solar watch, uh, and it, you can recharge it as much as you want. I'll go ahead and leave it on the longer setting for the backlight. And power save. Now power save mode, you can have that on or off. I'll leave it on. What this means is after 10 p.m., if the watch is in the dark, like, you know, let's say you've taken it off for the night, and it's in the dark, and after about an hour of being in the dark after 10 p.m., the display will go blank to save power. The way to get it out of power save mode would be to press any button that'll take it out of power save mode or turn the lights on, get it in a, a well-lit area and the display will come back on. Or, um, or you can, you can kind of wiggle it because it's got a, a sensor inside for an automatic backlight and that sensor will, will show that, hey, someone's using this watch, someone's moving this watch and that'll bring the display back. So, you know, power save, it's nice, but you can turn it off if you want to. And right here, now this is where you can select either you know, metric or non-metric units for things like the thermometer, uh, the altimeter, and the barometer. So right now it's set to uh, non-metric, but if I push this button up here, that's where I can select Celsius or Fahrenheit. Okay, I'm gonna leave it on Fahrenheit. This button here to select either inches of mercury on the barometer or hectopascals. Okay, and this button down here to select feet or meters on the uh, altimeter. So you've got that option right there. And now we're back to, you know, setting the home time zone. So I'll go ahead and put it back to the regular timekeeping mode. And again, in the regular timekeeping mode, you've got this pressure trend, the moon. And if I just tap this button, this adjust button while I'm in this, uh, that, that'll give me the tide graph on this home screen or the full date. So I've got that option right there. Now a couple more details here. If I push this button and I get into the tide mode, let's say uh, I've, I've looked in some charts here and I don't think that this is accurate. I can press and hold this adjust button and I can actually change uh, right here and select a different time for when I think the high tide is. Okay, from here, I can also push this uh, and uh, right here, it's going to allow me to change the, the moon icon based on whether I'm in the north looking at the moon or if I'm in the south looking at the moon. And basically what it does is it kind of turns this around. So if it's a half moon with, you know, one side lit up, it'll just reverse that and light up the other side. But I'll leave it on this setting because I am uh, in the northern hemisphere looking at the moon. Also, just to be thorough, uh, you know, here's, here's the uh, alarm mode here. If I wanted to change the alarm setting, I press and hold that adjust button, and there I can scroll up or down on the hour of that alarm, and push mode, and I can scroll up or down on the minutes of that alarm. It's, it's, you know, it's pretty standard as far as alarms on digital watches go, but I just wanted to make sure I was thorough enough to cover that. Now, rather than have to scroll all the way through the different modes to get back to that default timekeeping mode, if I wanted to, let's say I'm here, all I, all I need to do is hold this mode button down for a couple seconds and it will take me directly back to that home timekeeping mode. Uh, from here, uh, well, you've got a backlight and I'll show you that in just a moment. But first of all, I should show you that there's an automatic backlight. So basically it's got a sensor inside the watch. So as you tilt it up in this position, as though you're looking at it, so you want to see the time. If the backlight is set for automatic mode and if it's dark enough, then that backlight will come on automatically with just that movement. And to activate that, you press and hold this light button. Let me hold that down for just a couple seconds there. And there, when I did that, this little icon appeared on the screen, auto light. So again, that's where you turn that on or off just by holding down the light button for a couple of seconds. Okay, it's off. I'll turn it back on and now I'll show you what it looks like when that, uh, that backlight comes on. Of course, I don't have a perfectly dark room here and this isn't the way it's going to look exactly to your eyes, but it gives you a, a you know, little bit of a reference there to what it will look like 
when that backlight comes on. Now let's take a look at the hardware here. That's a nice bracelet there. As I said, titanium. It's got that nice uh, Pro Trek uh, logo on it. And the way you unlatch that is you uh, pull that up like that, and then you squeeze right here, and there you go. That's your, your bracelet right there. So as you can see on the back of the watch, it's got this extra piece of plastic that I don't see on a lot of other Casio watches or G-Shock watches. So this is kind of covering up where there might be some screws to hold this back of the watch in place. But that also allows the, you know, the watch to maybe sit a little more stable on your wrist because of these two pieces that uh, pivot just a little bit right there on each end of the bracelet. As far as the bracelet goes, uh, yeah, it might be a little difficult to add or remove links here, but I'll show you how I do that. Uh, perhaps you can see right in here, there are some arrows indicating that this is where you would insert a tool that would kind of push these pins out to, uh, and there's one pin for each link. And of course, if you want to remove one link, you're going to have to loosen um, two links, you know, take the one out and then put, put them back together. I've already kind of, you know, pre-released on this side, I've kind of pushed these through uh, on, on this side so that I can remove a link over here. So, you know, a nice little stout tool like that can help to push that through. Or it might be worth investing in uh, uh, maybe kind of a jeweler's uh, bracelet tool so that you're, you're working with some pieces that aren't necessarily going to scratch this, you know, if you're improvising. But once those are pushed through, see, it's easy enough to take some pliers or something and just pull these pins all the way out, like, like that. Uh, luckily, I don't have to do this very often, right? <laughs> and see now, let's pull that out. Okay. Now, this link here is completely free. I can take that out. Now, here's a tricky part. When I took that little pin out, there was a tiny little cylinder that came out as well. And if you're not careful, you lose that, you're going to be in trouble because that pin's not going to go in as tight as it should be when you place it back in. Where this goes, let me just kind of pick it up with this little tool here. It goes into one end of this. Not this end, but this end. So if you line that up, and you got to get that to go back into that space before you put the links back together. Okay, I saw someone else's YouTube video and they claimed that these pins didn't work when, you know, when he tried to, to resize the watch bracelet and took a link out. And he said, oh, no, these pins don't work anymore. Probably he lost that little piece that goes in there. So it's a little bit tricky. Be careful you don't lose those because, you know, as you take out multiple links, you're going to be left with pieces like this floating around. Uh, and those tiny ones are going to be a problem. Anyway, when you got the links where you want them and you're ready to uh, reattach, you know how it's loose right there. And I've got that little, that little cylinder stuck in there. Now I can push this back up through the bottom and uh, just kind of work that in. And if I want to, I can just kind of gently push it with something something solid like this. Try not to, uh, there. And so now that's tight enough, that's going to hold there. And uh, maybe that's sticking out just a little bit. Let's see if I can coax that in a little bit farther without scratching. Ah, okay. Looks pretty good. Now you might want to go to an experienced jeweler to get that done, but uh, that is what you can do. Do it yourself if you want to, to uh, again, take out links and put them back in. And do be careful with those small pieces. Now I can try it on my wrist and uh, let's see, shouldn't be quite as loose as it was. You know, that's not bad right there, just, just as is. So, okay, pretty good. Now, if I wanted to do any more fine tuning from this point, like many other uh, watch bracelets of this kind, there is a little bit of fine tuning available right in here. And with any luck, just using kind of a, a normal spring bar tool, you could pop this out, just a little spring bar in here to allow you just a little bit of fine tuning in one of those three, one of those three holes on each side to uh, to make that just a little bit tighter or looser. But I think after all the trouble I just went through with those links, this will do me just fine. All right, so I took these uh, extra pieces, everything that I took out, including the little spacer there, put a little piece of tape on it so that they wouldn't fall apart inside the bag, and I'm putting in this in this little Ziploc bag for later 
reference because, uh, you know, I just don't want any of those tiny pieces to get lost if I ever need to put a link back in. So again, it could be a little bit tricky trying to adjust the links on this watch. You may decide you want to take it to a jeweler or you may decide you want to do it yourself. Something I didn't show you, you know, this bezel here, it does actually turn. So if that helps you with your compass work, you know, it, it, it's actually, it's pretty smooth. I kind of like the way that feels when it turns, but you know, I'm going to leave it, I'm going to leave it oriented this way just because, you know, that's just what I'm going to do. <laughs> Now, there's just one other thing I wanted to mention about this watch. When I first saw it, I thought the proportions seemed strange to me. This really big watch on such a narrow, dainty looking uh, bracelet. If you look at it that way, especially, it looks like, wow, what's that little bracelet doing with a giant watch on it? You know, it doesn't look so bad that way. I have to say, though, once I got it, put it on my wrist here. And, uh, you know, you're not really looking at the bracelet when you're wearing the watch and with it with it this way it really doesn't seem doesn't seem bad at all so just something to to watch for if you had the same idea that you thought the proportions looked strange once you wear it i think it's better so there you go uh you know i think even if i had to pay more than what i paid i still would enjoy this watch so I think that's what I'll concentrate on i'm going to enjoy this watch moving forward and speaking of moving forward Yes, I have some more ideas for more episodes of the Good Timekeeping Show. Thanks for watching this one, and I will see you again.